Okay, so Signature, right? They hooked me up with this new uh, shark film, right? Now, um, we had Under Paris a few weeks back. So more sharks, more sharks. This one is from director Joaquim Hayden, right? It is written by Nick Soltres and Andrew Pendergast. It is produced by Pendergrass, um, Chris Reed. It's executive produced by Lauren Case, Anders Erden, Eric Harbert, right? Matthew Smith Leons, Will Machin, Sam Parker, Sarah Schuck, Emil Tricot, uh, Blair Ward. Shannon D. Ward, Sean Whalen, uh, Michael Yates. It's line produced by Roger Zamet um, and Dylan Klass. Patrick Kirst took care of the music. Eric Borjensen was cinematography. Sarah Trevis took care of the casting. Thomas Delonde is production design. Art direction is John Banforpe. Mary Davin was costume design. Hair, makeup, special makeup and effects. We got Emma Beard, Oraine Denive, Karen Shembri Grimmer, Mary Eggletine Pryson, and Nina Vile. The cast, right? So we got Noah, played by Jack Parr. He's mentor, Levi, played by the late Julian Sands. We've then got Noah's ex, Sam, played by Kim Spearman. Her brother, Brett, played by Alexander Arnold. Right, then there are other friends. There's Riley, played by Aaron Mullen. Logan, played by Arlo Carter. Uh, yeah, I think that's them. There's also Brian, played by Max Maxim Durand. Um, yeah, the gist of the story. A group of old college friends reunite on a Caribbean scuba diving trip, exploring the wreckage of a World War II battleship, and find themselves trapped inside the underwater labyrinth of rusted metal of ah, underwater labyrinth of rusted metal surrounded by great white sharks. Bum, 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 bum. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the gist of things, right? Um, yeah, it's a survival tale. We've got a, uh, a director statement. I forgot what it was called for a second. I said, what are those things? Right. So it reads, what initially drew me to the project is the same thing that will draw the audience. The basic premise of being trapped in a World War II shipwreck with a shark. Whether you're a movie goer or the director, that premise immediately puts a lot of images in your head. And as a filmmaker, that's a wonderful place to start. I also saw an opportunity to deliver on all the genre expectations, while at the same time putting a little twist on it and adding something on top of the genre. We've seen shark movies before, but not in this setting, and not with this set of characters. While being scary, bloody, and claustrophobic, I think the film also has a lot of heart and it gives you permission to smile and laugh in between the scares. It's an entertaining film on many levels. Another draw was the ambition from the producers who at every stage pushed really hard to make this the best film it could possibly be. This is also the kind of project where everyone involved really puts in extra effort because of the special nature of the shoot. Even though the days were long and tough, every morning cast and crew would have a little smile on their faces as they entered 
the studio where we had built this huge crazy set and tank i think those smiles were an acknowledgement um of the fact that this is not something you get to make every day and that this shoot really was special as a director you always have the pleasure of working and collaborating with so many skilled crafts people and talented artists at every stage but this time i truly feel that everyone really put in something extra on top of their a game now <laughs> no one's gonna be like i think we phoned in this movie you know what i mean like look everyone was happy to be there because boy they didn't have any other work you know no <laughs> obviously you you you're looking to create something special right you're looking to put your best foot forward no one's hoping for a dud you know and with this film i will say the underwater sequences looked really good they looked really good man to be able to film all of that i mean there's that's something that's a huge feat so i commend them I commend them for, you know, pulling that bit off, right? Making that feel like, you know what I mean? You're in this frigging wreckage. That was great. The, you know, the film starts in 1942, 1944, right? We've got um this, it, well, World War II, right? So we have, we're on a submarine. Right, the, the, the submarine is stalking this battleship. Yes, it, it, it's 1944. Off the British Virgin Islands, the USS Charlotte. It's stalked by a German U-boat. And they torpe torpedo it. Torpedo it. Right, sink the ship. And we've got, you know, sh uh, crewmen in the water. Crewmen in the water. One's on a a piece of wood and then the other one he's like come over here mate and then something goes past it and you're like i know what that is right a shark a shark gets him then gets the other one and then we jump to present day now that's some scary shit because i don't know like I feel we've all heard those stories, right, of, of ships going down. You know, you've got hundreds of people on board, and then they rescue, like, 20. You know, it's some just crazy where, yeah, everyone's huddled together, and they're just getting picked off, right? And just thinking, you're, you're waiting for a rescue, and your friends are getting picked off, and you're thinking, are they going to come in time, or am I next? right and just because they're picking off from the outside doesn't mean you're safe in the middle because sharks you know what i mean they're under the water so it, it, it's one of those things where it's just like fuck so you've heard those stories so you feel that anxiety my only thing with the beginning was i would have liked the it to feel different i would have liked different kind of uh lighting a different tone to the film right a, a different look make it look grainy make it look old make it look like it's from 1944 you know i would have really have liked that like something that really sets it apart from our current day footage you know what i mean that would have really I, th I think that would have been a, a great little, uh, you know, thing, a little vibe for the film, really set it, you know, right? Then, you know, we've got this whole setup with Noah, you know, he's he's a protege of Levi, right? A f a Levi's a father figure, but you're just like, why? Right? We've got these dynamics set up, but we don't really like there's nothing that informs the dynamic you know what i mean it's just like oh something might get mentioned be like oh that's but it's just like all right why though right you know what i mean so 
you you kind of have no Levi that has, you know, he's passed on love in search of the US Charlotte. But again, why? You know what I mean? Like, did one of Levi's relatives go down on the Charlotte, right? Then you could be like, okay, I kind of get it. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, you're hunting for, you know, where your dad died or, you know what I mean? Obviously, it wouldn't be his dad, but, you know, something like that. Why has Levi been searching for this ship all his life, essentially? You know what I mean? We don't know. We don't know. Maybe I missed something. I don't think I did. But, yeah, we don't know. Then you've got some, like, Noah avoids a phone call from Brett, right? But you've got all these supposed college friends turn up. No one really feels like they're friends, right? That that was the that was the thing with this, like the 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 whole dynamic of this group. Don't really feel like they're friends, right? We got Sam, Brett, Noah, Riley, Logan. And it all just feels a bit of a mismatch, right? Nothing really feels solid with this group of people, which is, uh, yeah, it's an odd one. Then, you know, I think it, it, it's, as, um, oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, Jaquim said, right, he, he wanted to, have, you know, really dive into these tropes, right, and they did, because group of friends, right, they want to do a thing, they're told no, but you know it's going to happen, you know it's going to happen, but it was just the devices used, right, like this Levi's in debt, but it's like out of the blue, right, and Noah's was like, wait, how? Huh? You're in debt? How are you in debt? And that's the thing. Like, how is he in debt? How? Right? The, the rationale of it all doesn't really make any sense. Doesn't really make any sense. Because, you know, the... What is... What would happen? What would happen if they don't have the money? Then you'd be like, is that the worst thing? Right? Like, what does that mean then? Why would you, you know, take the money? Right? Like, none of these things are answered. None of these things are answered. You know? Like, how is Brett? Like, supposedly Brett, I mean, he's an influencer. Right? I think mean, that's essentially what it's meant to be. But it's just kind of like, okay, but why? How? You know what I mean? So you have these things thrown out there. You have these characters, right? Because you've got these friends. But when you have a large group and they don't really introduce you to anyone or a lot of these this group, you know what's going to happen to these people. Right? You know what's going to happen to these people. It's not rocket science here. It's not rocket science. So you, you're not building the tension because as a viewer, I know what's happening. I know where this is going. There's a, a thing Levi says on the boat. I think he's talking to Sam, right? And it's just like, oh, bum bum. Obviously, right, that's then going to play into this later in the film, right? Like, otherwise, it's, it's, ne it's not getting mentioned. There's no need for it to be mentioned, you know? That, that, that's the big thing, you know? Like, he's recovering from an injury. Because he, there's a bit where he's knitting, and he's recovering from an injury, right? That's what you learn. So, again, you know that's going to play into it, right? And you hope they don't do the thing that you feel they might do. Yeah, that's what you hope. People, like, 
there's these decisions made. Supposedly, our gang are all experienced divers. That's what we're told at the start. That's what we're told. No one acts like they're an experienced diver. That's the nutty thing, right? Things can go wrong, you know, all of this. That's fine. I get that. But no one is acting like they actually know how to dive, right? The, the, the rationales for this thing. Now, they're diving in the Caribbean. Um, there are sharks in the Caribbean. Right, so the whole thing of not even like check going, oh, there's not usually sharks in these waters. That means nothing. Like waters change, things change. You know what I mean? Like uh, it, it, it's just weird. The the conceit of this film is very odd for me. Right, there's people just doing these ridiculous things, these things that make no sort of sense. Right, they there's a bit on the ship where they find something, and I'm just like, I don't think that would be viable right now. I don't think that, like, what what do we say? What do we say? Like, that's not no, you that that that's not happening. That's in, that's ridiculous. You know, it's very, it was, it was weird. It was weird. You know, we don't, like, I didn't really need this whole love aspect of the film because you're not buying, again, you're not buying it. We don't know enough, right? I think you need these, you probably need these flashbacks of them as this couple, right? As this great love. Because you're not convinced, right? And it's not like the acting's bad or anything is like that. It's just there is not enough there in the script. You know, there's not enough there for us to be convinced. It, like the, the, the big thing with diving or anything like this, rock climbing, skiing, anything. If anyone starts to act reckless, you call it a day, right? You just be like, nah, we're not, we're not doing this, right? And if everyone turns around to go, the person, you know, what I mean, dragging their feet, going, I want to stay, they're gonna leave because they don't want to get left behind. Right? So you just think. Why didn't they leave? Why didn't they leave? Right? But the actions that cause all the, a lot of the crazy from people that are meant to be experienced divers, it doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. There's no contingencies. There's nothing. Right? But if you like these kind of films, right? If if these are your films, you know, if you enjoyed Under Paris, you know what I mean? If you enjoyed that, I think you will probably enjoy uh, The Last Breath. You know what I mean? That, that's what I believe. If you enjoyed, I think there's a film called The Dive, right? If you enjoyed that then you're going to enjoy uh, The Last Breath. You know, just any of, any of those kind of films, these shark films, crocodile, just any of those, like things like Crawl, if you enjoy that, you're going to probably enjoy The Last Breath. But it's just, yeah, I wish there was more substance here. Right, I wish that the characters were better fleshed out, you know, because it would make decisions, you know, make sense. You know what I mean? You'd go, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course that would that would happen. 
you know, of course they would do this thing. Yes, that that's completely where that would go. You know, like the director of this film, Joachim Hedden, he wrote the die. Well, he co-wrote the die, and I think, yeah, it's very similar. It, it's very similar with the kind of like, wait, why would they do that? Like, that doesn't make any sense. You know, what I mean, it's just one of those films. You know, so if you liked that, you were like the, you know, if you liked um. Fall, you know the one where those girls climb that tower, right? The, the, these are similar films where people do dumb things, right? Dumb things that you're just like, wait, what did you do? Why did you do that? Huh? Like, what? Where are we going? You know, it, it, it's just that. It's just that there's no one feel it doesn't look, feel like this is a group of friends. Like, why haven't they hung out in ages? You know what I mean? It, 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 there's just so many questions that don't get answered. And that's a problem. That's a problem. Because for this to work, we need to believe that these are the closest of friends, that any tragedy is going to wreck them it's gonna hit them hard it's then gonna create issues for the rest of them getting out I and mean, the, like that's what we need to believe we need to believe in the peril and you just don't believe in the peril or you don't care about people enough for it to matter right and that's an issue it should matter but you're just like eh who gives a fuck who gives a fuck, right? And there's something that happens at the end, which will have you going, what the fuck? <laughs> right, what the fuck? No one's doing that shit. No one is doing that shit. But that's me, right? As I said, if you liked The Dive, if you liked Under Paris, none of these things are going to matter. Because it's all about a certain type of storytelling, and you're all on board for that storytelling. You know what I mean? That's the jam with this, people. That's the jam. So this, the last breath, it will be hitting VODs, right? VODs, well, no, it's on VODs. It will be coming, I should say, to DVD, Blu-ray, and I think you, uh, that high, is it UHD? You know, that one, that one. On the 1st of July, right? That's it. So you can get it on the VOD. You can get it on DVD and a Blu-ray from the 1st of July. So that is Monday. So yeah, enjoy your shark action, people. The last breath.